We're going to work on 2.6, input and out output models. Um, we got to give credit where credit is due, and in this case, um, Wassily Lontif, who is an economist, won the Nobel Prize for developing matrix models to um, work through the input and output models for um, some pretty complicated um, market scenarios. We're going to look at a really simple market scenarios. The idea is that as you're producing some kind of a product, whether that's um, you know, wheat or calculators or phones or something like that, um, you're inputting some values, but you're also outputting those values um, in a way that works together. Energy might be your product, and to produce energy, you need energy. So you use up part of the commodity you're producing. And um, what, we've, what we're going to do, we're going to work through some matrices that have fractions of those commodities, commodities that get used up. Okay, you can tell I'm not an economist. However, this is a really great application of what we've learned here in Chapter 2, and it's also um, a really interesting, um, very, you know, very well thought out process. So we're going to go ahead and start off with um, an example of a very simple um, market. And in this first um, market economy, we've got just three commodities. And I'm going to go ahead and label those commodities in a three by three matrix. So we've got agriculture, manufacturing, and transportation. These work together to produce some agricultural commodities. You're also using up some agricultural commodities um, and so on. So I've got ag, manufacturing, and transportation. And here's how I put this together. We're going to work on, work on agriculture. To produce one unit, of, one unit of agriculture, it requires half a unit of manufacturing. And that unit can be whatever it's going to be, and we're going to define that later with our next matrix. Um, one quarter of a unit of transportation. So that means zero units of agriculture. Production of one unit of manu manufacturing requires a quarter unit of agricultural agriculture, a quarter unit of transportation. So that puts a zero here. And then to produce one unit of transportation, it's going to take a third of a unit of agriculture, a quarter unit of manufacturing, and that means no agriculture. This is our input-output matrix. Whoops, if I can spell it right. So this is A, our input-output matrix. What we really want to do, so our goal here, is to figure out the production matrix. We want to figure out what's the total amount that we need to find um, of the commodities that need to be produced. Well, to go along with this, we also have a demand matrix. And for that demand matrix, um, we're given the demand matrix. Well, for my example anyway, you're given the demand matrix. The demand matrix um, just gives you the demand in units for each of those commodities. So the demand for this one is 31, 10, and 20. And those are units, units of ag, units of manufacturing, and units of, what's our last one, transportation. What we're working on here is a system where some of the values get used up. Our goal, remember, is to find that production matrix to figure out how much of the um, commodity needs to be produced. That production matrix is going to be a capital X. And as we work through this, we know that the amount demanded plus the amount produced, which is going to be A times X, is going to be equal to the total amount produced. And let me clarify, this is the amount demanded, so this would be the amount that would be sold in the market. This A times X, this is how much is going to be used up, a quarter, a third, a half. This is going to be how much of that commodity is used up in production. So used in production. 
And if we have the amount sold, we have some leftover amount that did get used in production, then we've got the total amount produced. I'm going to get to the formula that you need to know and the one that we're going to be working through. So let me just do a little bit of algebra. Although these are matrices, I'm going to subtract the AX from both sides. So D, the demand matrix, is equal to X minus AX. I'm going to factor the X out. Remember, matrix multiplication is not commutative, so I need to leave the X on the right-hand side. And as I do that, as I factor the x out on the right-hand side, I have the a left, and that means I've got the identity matrix left here. What I want to solve for, remember, is that production matrix. So in order to solve for the production matrix, I need to get rid of this. If this were a number, I would divide by it, but it's not a number, so instead I need to multiply by its inverse inverse times I minus A. These two will cancel and become the identity matrix. So on this side we're going to get that matrix that we were looking for, the number that we need to produce, the demand plus the um, ones that get used up in production. On the other side I need to do the same thing. So that is I minus A. That's our identity matrix. 3 by 3 just so you know where I am here, 0, 0, 0. So that 3 by 3 identity matrix is the I. I minus A inverse, whatever I do to one side, I do to the other side, times D. Okay, so a lot of theory. I probably also butchered this poor economist's name that won the Nobel Prize. But what we've got now is our formula. And you do not need to memorize this formula. I will give it to you on the exam. But this formula gives us exactly what we need to use to find the amount produced. Let's go back to our example. I'm going to rewrite the formula because I'm going to cover it up. And I want to figure out what the production matrix is for our scenario. I'm going to do a lot of this with a calculator. It's a 3 by 3 matrix, so it's just a lot, a lot of work. So what I want to do is I want to take that matrix, that 3 by 3 identity matrix. I want to subtract that input-output matrix. Uh, 1 half, 0, 1 fourth, 1 fourth, 1 fourth, 0. But I want to take the inverse of that matrix, the resulting matrix, and then multiply it by matrix D. This over here is going to be a 3 by 3 matrix. This right here, this guy has three rows and one column, so this is a 3 by 1 matrix. So we're going to end up with a 3 by 1 resulting matrix that will represent how much needs to be produced in total for each of our three commodities. So the units work out really, really nice. What I don't want to do is to do all of that by hand. So instead, I'm going to go ahead and work through this using my calculator. I want to show you just a few things that we haven't looked at yet. The calculator is super powerful when it comes to matrices. There are some things I want you to do by hand. Identities, just two by two, I, um, two by two inverse matrices, I should say, by hand. You need to know how to do that. I'll ask you to show me that. But if you look in the matrix menu under math, um, there is an identity matrix option. I'm going to just choose this to show you what it does. If I want a 3x3 three three identity matrix, it will create one. I can also find the inverse of a matrix. Let's see, what do I have in here? Oops, second matrix. I've got a 2x2 two two here. There's the 2x2 two two matrix. I can find its inverse. I'm going to grab the matrix by going matrix, names. I put A on the screen. And then I just use this negative 1 symbol that says I want A inverse, and then I push enter, and it gives me A inverse. Okay, so that's how we're going to do this. The very first thing I need to do, though, is to input this input-output matrix, that's a mouthful, into um, a matrix. So I'm going to go second matrix. I need to edit because I'm putting a matrix in. I'm just going to choose A, change it to a 3 by 3 and then I'm going to type in these values. So 0, 1 fourth, 1 third, 
one half, zero, one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, and zero. So I've got that in my calculator. So I put this as matrix A. I also need to put this matrix here. So let's quit here. Go back to matrices. Um, you can choose D. That's a really nice way to label these. So this will be D. That will be A. Let's go ahead and choose matrix D. I want it to be a three by one matrix. Whoops, I want to edit it. So matrix, edit. I'm going to edit matrix D, changing it to a three by one matrix. So my three by one matrix has entries 31, 10, and 20. Okay, now think about our formula. Here it is. Into my calculator, I want to put I, which is really, I'm going to say identity three, because I want a three by three matrix. I'm going to multiply this by matrix. Oh, sorry, I'm subtracting, right? I'm still in these parentheses. I'm going to subtract matrix, matrix A. I'm going to ask the calculator for that inverse, and then all in one step. I'm going to multiply this by matrix D, and then this will give me my answer. Okay, if I just put the matrix bars here, it will look almost exactly like it will when you put it into your calculator. Okay, here we go. So quit, let me clear what I've got here so I've got room. So I'm going to start with parentheses. I want the 3 by 3 identity. So matrix, math, identity, so I hit enter, 3 for the 3 by 3 matrix, minus matrix A, so I'm going to go to matrix, and then names where I'm at, and A is right there. So I hit enter. So I've got identity minus A, so I can close the parentheses. Now I want the inverse, which is going to be just the negative 1. So I use this key here, the same one that I was getting the matrix from. So I'm going to hit that key for the negative 1 times. Now I need my matrix D. So I'm going to go into the matrix menu, um, just scrolling down to D, that 3 by 1 matrix. I hit enter, and I've got times D. I go ahead and hit enter again and I end up with my production matrix, 60, 52, 48. Okay, this is really generic, right? But egg came first, so 60 units of egg, 52 units of manufacturing units, whatever that is, and 48 units of transportation units. This will give me enough to meet the demand and also to handle the quantities that are used up during production. Okay, you got through that one? Okay, let's get through another one. I'm going to just kind of drop some of the scenarios. Let's just do another one. It's maybe just a little bit simpler, um, just a two by two matrix this time. And I am going to not give you a scenario, although I love the real life applications. Instead, I'm going to hand you a matrix A, 0.8, 0.2. 0 0.2, 0 0.7, and I'm going to hand you a matrix D, 2, and 3. Our goal is to find the production matrix. So we want to find X, um, find the production matrix X. Okay, so I'm going to go to my formula. So my formula says that I want to take the identity minus A, matrix A, take its inverse, multiply that by matrix D. It's such a nice application of what we've learned in this chapter. And that's going to give me the production matrix. Okay, so we can do this, right? So I'm going to do, in my calculator, I need to change A to this matrix. With a lot of experience plugging in matrices. So I'm going to I'm gonna go second matrix and edit. Whoops, edit. This guy is 2 by 2, so 2 by 2. And I'm going to put in my entries, 0 0.2, um, 0 0.8, 0 0.2, 0 0.2 again, and 0.7. So I've got matrix A. I'm going to go to matrix again, edit. I want to edit matrix D. Still up there? OK, so I'm going to edit matrix D. D is no longer a 3 by 1, it's a 2 by 1. And my entries are 2 and 3. 
I'm going to follow this formula through. So let me quit here. I'm going to follow the formula through. Remember this I is identity, but this time we want identity too. Okay, so following it along, here we go. So parentheses, matrix. I'm going to choose identity out of the math menu. So identity 2 minus matrix A. So matrix, I'm going to grab with the names, matrix A, enter. Parentheses, I want the inverse of that difference. And then I hit my inverse symbol here, x negative 1, so to the negative 1, times matrix D. So matrix, and I'm going to choose D. This is so much easier than solving that formula, that equation each time. And we end up with 60 and 50, so a 2 by 1 matrix, so 60 and 50. We can do this again for another um, 3 by 3 or a 2 by 2, but really the key is that you've got your calculator skills down. You know, I gave you an example where you kind of had to read through the information a little bit to figure out that this was your input-output matrix because you had a, a fraction of what um, commodities were used up during production. So that's your input-output matri ma input matrix. They gave you the demand, how many units were demanded of each quantity. And then our goal was to figure out the units that needed to be produced to meet demand and what was used in production. Um, and here, again, we, have, we don't have a context, but x is equal to 60 and 50, 60 units of whatever the first commodity is, 50 units of the second. Um, these are really very oversimplified examples of input-output matrices. Um, they get very, very large because, as you know, most um, markets have many, many more commodities than just two or three. But as you're working through these examples, this is the formula I want you to use. And in your calculator, I wish I wouldn't put that there, but in your calculator, this is what you're practicing. You're using the calculator's features to grab the identity, do the subtraction, take the inverse, and multiply it by the demand matrix.